Westminster leader for the SNP is with us now, Mr Blackford, good morning. You. You've got a smile on your face this morning. Well, look, at the end of the day, I don't think there's much to be happy about. I think our politics is in crisis. We've got a situation, as of now, ten members... Can I just stop you one second? Will Quince, who was on the programme on Monday defending the Prime Minister, has just quit. He is an education minister, children's minister. He has just quit. We were speculating yesterday yeah. whether that would happen. He sat exactly yeah. where you are with great sadness uh, and regret, he says, uh, that he has decided to leave this government. He sat there and he did defend the Prime Minister. He said yeah. that he was told by number 10 um, one thing and then several, three hours later um, they yeah. said something else. Sorry, I interrupted you. No, I feel for him or anyone that's gone out to defend the indefensible when they've been lied to, let's be clear about that. It's 11 Tory MPs that have now gone in the last 24 hours. This is a crisis. There's one man that now needs to accept that he is the problem, that he's lost the trust of the people of these islands, he's lost the trust of the House of Commons and indeed a vast number of his MPs and he now needs to realise that he has to go. We've got Prime Minister's questions today. There's lots of things we can be talking about. We need to be talking about the cost of living crisis, the war in Ukraine, but we won't be because we'll be speaking about Boris Johnson. He's now a block on us in the House of Commons doing the job that we need to do and for the good of everybody, Boris Johnson has to go. You don't hold back, though, do you, in the House of Commons? You're not without guilt when it comes to giving him a good kicking during Prime Minister's questions. Well, I, I've got a voice at Prime Minister's questions and I've got a responsibility to represent my constituents and my party. Um, but I have to say I'm ashamed as to where we are. I'm ashamed about the standards in public life, about someone that's lied to the House of Commons, that's breached the trust that was put in them, that over the whole Partygate thing, the only Prime Minister in office that's been found to have broken his own laws. He simply shouldn't be here. And we stumble on from crisis to crisis. There has to be an end to this. We need to be able to go on and tackle the immense challenges that we, that we have. And this man simply is going to have to be, I suspect, dragged kicking and screaming out of office, whether that's done by Tory MPs because they change their own rules or whether in the end it's by the Privileges Committee doing their job. This Prime Minister will be gone. For the sake of any, everyone and for his own dignity and self-respect, he needs to realise that this is over. You uh, respect uh, Nadim Zahawi, I'm guessing. He's a, a man that's very popular in the House of Commons chamber. He says that the Prime Minister has integrity. Well, I have to say, I'm really disappointed that Nazima said that. I don't think there are many people that can suggest that the Prime Minister has integrity. He doesn't. There's a charge sheet as long as your arm in terms of the indiscretions of this Prime Minister. And when you have a Prime Minister that has repeatedly lied, he doesn't seem to know the difference between truth and lying. It's not defendable. And I'm, I'm sorry that uh, Nazim has said what he has this morning because it's clearly, patently not the case. It's a man that has no integrity. It's a man that has no shame. Um, on your view on the fact that Sajid Javid and Rishi Sunak have decided to step away? Well, I'll, I'll thank them for what they did yesterday. Um, we know about the character of the Prime Minister. This should have happened some time ago. But my message to Conservative MPs, do your job. Whether it's Rishi, uh, whether it's Sajid, the rest of them now have to step up to the plate. Let's bring this to an end. Let's not continue the pain any longer. And let's make sure that we press the reset button and that we can rebuild trust in politics. I, mean, I want Scotland to go in a different direction, but I want to make sure that we can actually do the job that we need to do while we're in Westminster, and that means tackling the crisis that we face. You know, we're going to go into the winter very soon. The cost of living crisis is very much with us. We need to make sure we're dealing with inflation. Let's deal with the fundamentals, and we can only do that when we lance the boil that's there, when this Prime Minister has gone from office. And if there's a snap election, will you still see that as the SNP, um, as a referendum on whether there should be another independence referendum? You know, our First Minister spoke last week about the roadmap that we have, trying to make sure that we can deliver on the mandate that we have for an independence referendum. But let me say that I will relish an election for us to put the case for Scotland to be an independent country. We have a roadmap that's in place. I want to make sure that we remove Boris Johnson. But in the end of the day, it's Westminster, it's Brexit that's causing us so much damage. And let's not forget that this week of all weeks, that the Labour leader has come out and said there's no going back into Europe, there's no going back into the single market, the customs union. Scotland has its own way forward, which is an independent country back into Europe, and that's what we will do. But I certainly well, look forward if to... The UK, only if the Westminster Parliament allows you to, though. Well, I think, you know, at the end of the day, this is about democracy, and Westminster should respect 
that the SNP and our partners in the Greens, that there's an independence mandate in the Scottish Parliament, the people of Scotland have got the right to have a say in their future and Westminster should respect that. One way or the other, an independence referendum will happen. I want to put that case as to why we can deliver that greener, that more prosperous Scotland back in the European Union. That will happen. And the sooner that happens, the better for everybody. But my message to Westminster is come and meet with us. Let's agree how we can have an independence referendum like we did in 2014 based on the Edinburgh Agreement. Let's respect democracy and let's respect the rights of people of Scotland yeah, to have their say. Yeah, my question is, would, would a snap election, or any election, but particularly if it's, uh, it's quite soon, would you see that as a referendum on an independence referendum? Well, what we've said first and foremost is that we want to take this to the Supreme Court. Let's do that. And we've said, of course, um, what we have, let's assume that we can win that, we have a referendum. If we don't, then of course we will look at our tactics for a, an independence referendum using a, a general election. But the sequence of that will be going to the Supreme Court first. If there's an election before that, of course we'll, we'll think long and hard about how we fight that election, but it will be about Scotland's right to have a referendum and to be an independent Okay, country. could we see ourselves in a position where we've got a perfect storm in Westminster this uh, the, by the end of this week? Prime Minister has to go. Uh, the uh, leader of the opposition has to go because of what's happened with um, Durham and uh, drinking a beer. And you're in quite a bit tricky uh, situation as well at the moment, aren't you? Well, I'm determined to make sure that I lead the SNP group at Westminster and I'm ready to stand shoulder to shoulder with colleagues in the Scottish Government to fight the independence referendum. Of course, all of us have faced issues in terms of what has happened, bad behaviour at Westminster. I'm determined to make sure that we lead by example. I'm reviewing uh, our disciplinary code. I want to make sure that staff, whether it's in the SNP or elsewhere in Westminster, can feel safe. Yeah, but... Um... Did you know about the allegation and did you try to protect him? No, and at no time at all. You know, I was involved with a number of others in making sure that we set up the ICGS scheme uh, way back in 2018. I think we need to reflect on where we are. We need to make sure that we are protecting everyone that works in the House of Commons. I'm determined that we do that, we, that we take our responsibility seriously. I'm sorry for anyone that's faced any bullying, any harassment, any sexual misconduct, and we need to make sure that staff are always uh, supported. That is the obligation that we have and I'm absolutely crystal clear that we must do that and I'll take my responsibilities in the SNP to and make sure that's that, the case. And finally on that, what do you say to people who make the comparison between this situation and what the Prime Minister was trying to do with Chris Pincher? Look, at the end of the day, it's vastly different. We had a, a process that happened to take place through the ICGS. I've upheld the decision that took place. Patrick Grady was suspended. He's no longer an SNP MP. It's important that people face consequences for their actions and I'm determined to make sure that those that have faced uh, bullying, sexual harassment, that they get justice. And you didn't try, just a final, I know I said that was the final point, this is definitely the final point, um, you didn't try to um, stop people making that um, situation public? No, absolutely not at all. Um, I mean, if any, anybody ever comes to me, I will discharge my obligations and I'll make sure that anybody and everybody are signposted to the opportunities that there are for them to take complaints forward. That's the right thing to do and that's what I've always done. Good to talk to you as always, Mr Blackford. Thanks Thank for you. taking the time to join us on the programme.